All right. This video, I'm gonna rework, restore, whatever you want to call it. This, this, I believe, is a Bostitch. It's not an Estwin. I think it's a Bostitch. And I'm not sure. I have to look because this this handle has a yellow tint to it. And I'm pretty sure Bostitch made some because I've done one before in the past. The problem I have, if you guys can see it, but uh, I've got a bent claw. Let's see if I can show you. It's definitely bent. So, I tried to do some reading on this and saying how hardened this is, how, but nothing says any of these are hardened except for uh, one, I can't remember what hammer, S-Wing hardens, I think it's a drilling hammer. Anyways, I'm going to try to heat this up with my torch and bend that back and then clean the rust off of it. Just out of curiosity, let me see if I can put a little carburetor cleaner on the bottom of this see what I can see patents pending that's all it says patent pending yep patent I'm pretty sure this is Bostitch because it's it's orange color. Yeah, this is an orange color. You can see the orange coming out. Uh, always wear safety glasses. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Bostitch. All right, let's fire up the torch and see what we get. All right, guys. Got the torch out. Got it set. Hopefully, fire this up without any problems. This will work. This might suck.
Ugh, got it too tight. There. Actually, that worked. Now I got to sharpen the the uh, ends of the claws. Someone, man, they they beat on this hammer. It's a smooth face hammer, but still they have used it pretty good. I don't know why anybody. I guess they're not don't know how to use a hammer. They do what they do. I guess it really doesn't matter to have leather on this since it's all boogered up and dirty. Uh, let me turn the torch off, turn the gas off, and sell the gauges back to zero, and I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I bled the lines off on the torch. Now some guys leave the they leave their acetylene oxygen on. I I always bleed. That's the way I was taught, so that's what I do. Now, I'm going to clean up that uh, end right here. Oh, tight. Okay, someone, someone did a number on this. Ah. guys a little what I'm doing here Looks like it's got a little welder splatter. side there is what I'm getting at. A burr or a welder splatter, splatter, not sure. I'm trying 
you see how flat, how rounded that edge is. Actually, it doesn't look that bad. I'm wondering if I can take a little bit the top of it. But these little finer file here. Focus camera. I think I think I got it. I'm gonna leave it right there. And then the rest of it just wire wheel it. Focusing on the camera, sorry. Let's go back. Yeah, let's take a wire wheel. I'm gonna cover this part of it on the rubber with the uh, Mountain Dew can. Tape it on the edge just not to booger up the material. I don't think this is pitted. I don't think I say that, I'm not sure. And it looks like I got it pretty. Wonder how they pin it. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'll be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to use a little aggressive wheel on this. Main reason is because I don't have a small wire, fine wire wheel, or a brass wheel. Harbor Freight's about the only place in town that carries them, so. They're still out of them. Anyways, I'm going to uh, do this and then we'll go to the Scotch Sprite, uh, the one by 30, work on it a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
the, there's not much pitting on this. It, I think some of this is actually mill marks. Really, I do believe. And then someone, of course, didn't know how to use the hammer and banged it up pretty good on this side. I'm just going to clean that up with a file. A little file work there. And then I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use the 4x6 belt sander to clean the top and the side here, the, the uh, hammer head itself. I don't know, let's do file work next. All right. Uh, I don't want to use such an aggressive file. Yeah, this one will work. back out once you start this and then you realize where your grooves were at you see this right there is pretty deep Should have left well enough alone. That's a bad habit. Always trying to make something look a little nicer. That's all right. It's my tool now. I don't care. Let me switch around the other side of the table. The camera is kind of in the way. up making this thing look brand new I guess dark spot that's where it's dented okay let's back up a little bit here got it's right along the edge there
All right, guys. Pretty sure I'm done filing. Got all the nicks pretty much gone. And I did file a little bit up here. There was uh, some pretty good nicks. They're not too bad. Anyways, I'm going to use the belt sander to clean it up a little more. Go to the one by 30 belt sander and use that Scotch Bright pad. See what we can do with it. I stopped the video because I was I just dawned on me I've got these other this is a medium grit I call it a scotch bright belt I don't know really I can't remember the brand that I uh, got that idea from uh, 357 Magdad and uh, these belts anyways I got from him so I haven't tried the medium grit so I thought I'd try it and see how well it takes off material. Boy, my motor's going, I think.
Alright, we're good. I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna close this. Yeah. You know, I just thought of something. I don't know why in the heck I'm cleaning this up because I was just going to paint this either a hammer black or a hammer gray, and then just polish the the claw hit top in the head. Yeah, I'm not going to polish all this. This. Yeah, I might be going overboard. Anyways, I give me an opportunity to test this belt, and it, it is more aggressive. I will agree to that. It's uh, probably equivalent to a 120 grit sanding belt, regular sanding belt. I wouldn't use these on wood just because you couldn't clean them if you wanted to. All right, cleaned up pretty good. I'm gonna polish this, and I'm gonna polish this, and I think I'm just gonna paint this part hammer black. I still get. I need to get my Dremel tool and clean in between the claws. All right, let's do a little polishing. the buffing job it's not the best I left the this is mill marks uh, that's not pitting from from rust that's just mill marks at first I thought it was rust but it's not and then I left all the dents and dings up there didn't take them all out same way on this side mill marks the hammer itself is in really good condition and it's I just want a good usable hammer I, I straightened the uh, the uh, claw back out and I'm just gonna paint this part paint this part and underneath the claw and this is gonna give a good thorough cleaning we'll see if uh, my uh, 
hand cleaner that I use, my Gojo will work. Take that towel off. Huh. I wonder what caused that. I wonder if that's the. Uh, I, I guess the tape peeled off some of the gunk. Okay. Well, let's see how the hand cleaner works. I don't want to use too much carburetor cleaner on this because uh, it'll soften it. Soften it too much. Oh yeah, look at there. Yeah, let's try a little brass brush. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can't bring it back to 100%, but I just want a good usable hammer. I got to remember where I got. I think I got this pawn shop. I'm pretty sure I did. You know, go back, look at the video. And it is bent. It's not like anybody wanted it. Nobody was going to take the time to work at it to make it look good. I mean, it would have been a usable hammer, but the way the claw was bent like that, you're not going to pull too many nails like that. So that being said, not too many people know how to swing a hammer anymore and use nails. Everybody has to try to screw everything together. Personally, I like a good hammer. I, don't get me wrong, I like my screws. Yeah, I don't think this is an S-wing. I'm pretty sure this is Bostitch. Pretty sure. Which, when these came out, I'm pretty sure they were $107 or right around there. Have to look them up. I saw a post on one of these a long time ago. They were like $107. Now I'm going to clean this really good, the metal part of it, just to, so I can paint it. really strange is this side has like a blue tint to it. This side is more orange. All right, now that I got this far, I want to try just a little bit of carburetor cleaner. Lightly go over it and try to get the... I don't want too much carburetor cleaner because I don't want to soften the rubber up too much. Just peeling the, some of that gook and dirt and stuff off. Let's see what time it is. 4.22. Got some steaks to put on the grill and I'll make sure I get them started. 
hate eating late at night. Well, you know what? It's actually bringing the rubber back. This carburetor, of course, I'm just not, I'm going to take it slow. I'm not going to soak it. Actually doing a pretty good job. Yeah, like I said, it didn't really need to be cleaned up. Would have been a good old junk hammer just to throw in the back of the toolbox in the truck. Or, you know, just an old uh, hammer just to beat on a ball joint or or a uh, steering assembly off or something, but. I don't know, I gotta, ever since I had my fire, I cleaned all my tools and got in there. But I've always cleaned my tools. Always, always. Can't help it. Like I said, the facility I work at, we have to, uh, you just can't leave your stuff lying around. Uh, you just can't do that. You gotta keep your stuff up. I'm wondering, if I do a little scrubbing on this. Is that dirt or is that rubber? Oh, that's dirt. I got dirt in the brush. Try a different brush. I'm definitely making it orange again. <laughs> That's pretty cool. guys I better stop video there and it's gonna get long anyways I'll uh, do a little more cleaning and then I'll, I'll get this painted black when I come back we'll uh, uh, probably be the end polish it off you guys don't need to see me painting like I said I'm just gonna take this off here I'm gonna take this head off take this part of it and just paint this a uh, probably a hammer black uh, hammered Rust-Oleum hammered? Yeah. That's what I'll use. Yep, that's what I'll do. Alright guys, got it painted black. Take the tape off and throw a little wax on the polish part. I'll be done with this hammer. It's a good usable hammer now. Now somebody out there is going to say you shouldn't have heated it with a torch and bent it and takes the temper. But the more I think about it, and these hammers can't be tempered that much. For one thing, if they were hardened, it's the first time you hit another piece of steel, you'd break something. So I think what I did would be just fine. Now, how do they bend it? I have no idea, but uh, somebody definitely, definitely bent it. And who knows, they put a, put a cheetah bar on it and you know, who knows. All I know is I don't got anything invested in it, except my time, what, maybe two and a half hours worth of work cleaning it. It's a good hammer. Good, good hammer. 22 ounce. I'm almost positive it is a Bostitch. And I know back in the day when they sold these, uh, I don't know if they still make them, I haven't even bothered looking, but I know before when I was looking, they were like $104 or $107. So, definitely 
a good hammer. I mean, they're they're just a, a knockoff of an S wing. Uh, this one doesn't have a waffle face; it's a smooth face. Which this would make a good uh, for someone to uh, like cabinet work, trim work, someone that didn't want to uh, or sheetrock work. Put a little wax on. I'm not going to wax the paint. This is just going to be a good all-purpose hammer. I thought about giving it away, but I think I'm going to keep it. I don't have a Bostitch hammer. I have I have two 2080 ounce best wings. There was a little bit of cleaner wax. It's a good, good hammer now. Good usable hammer. I shouldn't have painted it black. The more I like now, I like that hammer gray better. But there it is. Good usable hammer. I, shoot, I don't have nothing in it. I might have fifty cents in this hammer, maybe. Uh, I bought it. I am sure I bought it from the pawn shop, and it was a bent. They weren't selling it. Nobody was picking it up because it had a bent claw on it. But obviously, I fixed it. Yeah. Now I have a good hammer. Uh, here, give me a second, and I'll go grab a S-wing. We'll compare them. All right, guys. I just uh, thought I'd show you. I did look this Bostitch up. They still make it. Uh, $51 new. Uh, so, but I was going to compare the. This is a 22 ounce S wing, and this is a 22 ounce. And they're, I mean, to tell you the truth, just by looking at them, the, the molding, the casting, the boss stitch is better. I don't know how to. I don't know if I can show you, but the, I don't know, the build quality, even up here on the neck, the casting, it's thicker here, it's thinner across here. Uh, you know, even the, didn't realize, but. You know, I didn't, I didn't fully restore this one completely. I didn't do a real great job because it's a good used hammer. I just use it whenever I need. Uh, Feel-wise, they pretty much feel the same. They're, you really can't tell a difference. Uh, and the only difference I can, if there is a difference, is in the handle. But that could be because this one's old. This one was left outside. This one was abused. This S-Wing here was just totally abused. But it feels thicker. The, the Bostitch, the, the handle itself feels a little thicker. But that could be because this, there's some shrinkage. It's gotten old. Uh, stuff this hard as rock. But the, I don't know how to just, the claws on the Bostitch are, are just more uniform, are better. And it could have been the assembly line, it could have been the quality control, it could have been wear over time, I don't know. Uh, these are my framing hammers, my 28 ounce. And they are, you know, if you look at them real close, you can tell a difference in the way they're made. The the claw on this one is thicker than this one. Now this, oops, this one was in a fire and I restored it. 
uh, my wife and daughter bought this for me, I don't know, 20 years, 25 years ago. And uh, I put a wooden handle, I made, a, I made my own handle. I made it thicker. Uh, if you guys ever swing one of these 28 ounce, you'll understand uh, you can drive a nail. If you're framing, you can drive a nail with a 28 ounce where you don't get the impact you get with a 22. It, there, there is a difference. But then again, a 22 like this would be great for sheetrock. You know, smooth face. You can see I've used it. Uh, I do own one claw hammer. One and it's an arrow. And don't know. It's an old arrow. That's all I know. And I did restore this one and put a new handle. Actually, I took this handle off of another hammer. Uh, but I wanted you to see the difference and pretty sure the rubber on this one because this has got a real nice smooth texture this still has a nice smooth texture and this one's just hard as rock this one was out setting out in the sun someone abused this one uh, but anyways I just want to show the difference uh, that there's one thing about hammers that I'm used to these uh, hammers, these framing hammers, and I'm not good with claw hammers. I just don't use a claw hammer. I, I never really liked them. That's just the way I was taught. But there was a guy that messaged uh, on, on one of my videos, GC videos, George Charles videos, that's just GC. He said that's what he uses on the fence and the farm because when he builds fences and stuff, he just hangs it on the fence, which that's never really thought about it, but that makes sense. And boy, this one's got a nice curve to it. <laughs> it's got a real good curve. It's just not what I'm used to. I, I, I guess I, if I used it enough, I would, would cater to it. But this is my hammer. This, if I'm gonna drive some nails, I'm using a 28 ounce and I'm using this big thick wood that I got on here. I actually like this. Uh, it's, it's just got to, I like it better than this. This is too thin. Uh, even my hands aren't that big, but still I like the feel of this with the, the, the I don't know how to call it, swell. It's not swollen, it's just the way I designed it. When I put all this wood on here, I shaped it to where it felt good, and then I drove some nails with it. And I'm telling you, this for me, I custom made my own hammer. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, the shock vibration, whatever. Uh, usually I'm wearing gloves, I don't mind it. I don't have a problem with this. This is a little skinny. Uh, mind you, I, re I bought this uh after the fire i had to have a hammer and i hardly used it i used this one once i got fixed this one this is the one if i'm going to drive some nails this is the one i use and now i use this one uh it's smooth face if i'm working on cabinets uh, or drywall work i'll use this uh, it's a little big for drywall work a lot of guys won't use something this big and a lot of guys now don't even use nails to, for drywall but there's some instances where you have to have them so uh, the facility I work in is steel stud construction so uh, everything's screwed we screw everything but I still use these for trim work uh, you know tapping over a cabinet, lining up your surfaces, your countertops, things like that. It's just, it's a good all-purpose hammer. I use, I've got two of these actually, I got one of these at work. Uh, but I just wanted to show you, you know, good hammer, bent, it was bent, uh, I said bent frame, <laughs> it had bent uh, claw, but the only thing I regret now is painting it black. I should have used that hammer gray. I like the gray better. Uh, 
S-Wing uses a gray. Uh, some of their newer hammers, I believe they're 22 ounce, it's painted gray here and under here. Uh, so that's what uh, I should have stayed with. But good hammers, I mean, like uh, GC said, you know, he, he's used to a claw hammer. And when, you know, using it on the farm, I remember back in the day, my dad and everybody had claw hammers. But when I got into some construction work, these are what we used, the S-Wing. I mean, everybody had, you know, we called them straight claws. Uh, framing hammers is what everybody called them. Uh, everybody has their preference. I guess, I don't know, I, I like the looks of this, this anvil is longer and I picked it up, I remember buying this, I picked it up out of the five dollar bin at the pawn shop because it was in really rough shape but I like the arrow. I thought that was pretty cool. I've never used this. I've cleaned it up, made it look nice, made the handle look and I've never used it. It just sits there in the but I guess you could use, you know, a, a claw like this gives you more leverage to pull nail out or something like this. You may you put a block or something underneath, but yeah, I don't care. I'm uh, used to, I don't do framing much anymore at all. So I say at all that uh, if I'm going to use a hammer, it's usually to, to put cabinets in place or some trim in place or something like that. And... If I'm using trim now, if I put trim up, I usually use a nail nail gun or brad nailer. All right, I'm just uh, babbling now. So anyways, I just thought I'd show you some extra hammers along with this. But this 22 ounce uh, Bostitch, it's, I honestly think it's better made than the S-Wing. And I like my S-Wing. It's just, uh, the the forging I guess the forging but that could be that this forging of the this S-Wing could have been on an older uh, uh, forge or an older uh, I can't think of the word now anyways the the material, the item they used to forge this with was just old and wore out. The cast, the casting, that's what I'm trying to get at, the casting. Uh, I do know during production that over time the casting will have wear marks, it'll, it'll have problems where they've touched up the casting and instead of making a new mold they'll reuse the old one as long as they can. Uh, and this could be a new production, I meant when this came out it could have been a new cast so who knows anyways ladies and gentlemen I hope you like my video uh, I've got a bunch of hammers uh, most people don't use hammers anymore they use uh, nail guns or impacts or whatever but uh, I do like my hammers it's what I grew up using I still use hammers and when you're working on a fence post like he said I never thought about it but that make a great hammer when you're working on you can just hang it on your fence when you're working uh, that is a good good point anyways ladies and gentlemen have a good evening